Okay, number two is Operation Northwards. Now this this is un, this is a strange one. You've got so as you know under Kennedy and in the sixties and fifties, sixties, seventies, there was Cuba was viewed as a huge threat to the U.S. So the U.S. military were brainstorming all sorts of options how to essentially how to invade Cuba and op what I pro Operation Northwoods is, is the US military's official proposal to kill American citizens, sorry, to kill American civilians, bomb US cities and hijack planes in staged terrorist attacks on US soil and abroad. I kid you not. Now these were proposals and plans written and signed in 1962. The bombs I refer to would go off in Miami, Washington DC and other American cities. US Navy warships would be blown up and drone technologies would be used in the hijacking of, of planes. And all that would be blamed on Cuba as a justification for military invasion into Cuba, okay? Now, as I think I said there, I, I might have skipped by it, but that was signed by all the US Joint Chiefs of Staff. So they represent the entire military. And so they are saying, let's use US civilians as pawns. Let's trick them with a, with fake, with, with essentially US government sanctioned terrorism, which will be classified. And let's make them believe, well, damn, the, the public will, there'll be an uprising. We've got to invade Cuba now. So, now that's, this didn't go ahead, I should say. Oh, well, you should know that if you know anything about history, but the only reason it didn't go ahead is one man, and I'll get to that in a minute. One man in the entire senior uh, US admin government administration in 1962. So, before I get to who that man was, and many of you can probably guess, but I've had, I've had off the record discussions with former and current people in the military as well as CIA and NSA agents. All think Northwoods is not important or a sign of any immorality. They, are, they argue to me that, this, this is their basic argument, okay? Senior military and political figures engage in all sorts of wild think tanks all the time. And that doesn't mean they are serious about everything. So essentially they're saying, you know, you know like when you're sitting in an office and you've got a new project and you're brainstorming. That's, that's, what, that, that's their argument and justification for the US leaders almost pulling this, proposing it and almost going ahead with that. Personally, I totally disagree. Think about it, right? All the Joint Chiefs of Staff representing the entire US military signed off on this idea of creating terrorist attacks on US soil, all to be blamed on a foreign enemy. Now, the one final signature, which they assume, which these Joint Chiefs of Staff, by the way, assume would be a mere formality, the one final signature needed to go ahead was President John F. Kennedy, and he said no. Now, I can give an analogy here. This is my view of often what it's like to be president. An analogy here is, so I mentioned I'm in the film industry now. Being a film director is a good analogy for a president, I believe, because a film director has so many you can't possibly know everything about making a film, even if you're an extremely versatile artist, even if you're, tr you know, you're trained with multiple degrees. At the end of the day, someone's going to come up to you and say, what color curtain do you want here? What, what music do you want in this scene? What, you know, there's going to be things where eventually you've got to delegate. And you'll have your ideas, but directors eventually have to go, well, what do you think? take it on board and then say, yeah. And, and that often happens with presidents. They can't know all the different departments. They can't know about environmental issues, healthcare, education, 
and military issues. So for these, the idea that this was just brainstorming, you know, uh, think about that. They all put forward a unanimous document to say, let's commit, um, let's commit terrorism against US citizens on US soil and let's blame it on Cuba. Let's not admit that we did it ourselves. Now that was, they would have been very sure that the president would do that. It's not early, it's, it's definitely, once you present something to the president, it's not early brainstorming. It's not like a private think idea between a couple of generals to say, hey, do you think this, this would be embarrassing to try to propose? Or it's a really formula, uh, it's a really formal thing they presented. And so it didn't go ahead, but it's still a conspiracy because as I mentioned, a conspiracy is people plotting to pull something off. Like if, for example, so some, some people have also argued to me, well, James, it's not, that's not, it didn't happen. What are you talking about? But look at it this way. Let's say if, um, let's accept for the sake of argument that John F. Kennedy was assassinated by some sort of internal conspiracy rather than the lone gunman theory. Let's say instead of him being assassinated, it was caught at the 11th hour. They managed to capture the people who were planning to assassinate the president. That would still be a conspiracy because you caught them red handed, but the conspiracy was in motion. So the same with this. This was very, this was very far advanced. They were about to do it. And I think it's a good one to think about. Now, I should also note there's an inter interrelated and lesser known project called Operation Mongoose, which ties in with Operation Northwoods and includes additional proposals from, for government-sponsored terrorism. One that even included, you know, that this was during the early part of the space race. And they were saying, if any, if any um, rocket blew up, we should blame it on Cuba. That was within the Operation Mongoose uh, document. So, Fascinating stuff, and I believe Operation Northwoods is a real eye opener into into the way these sociopathic leaders at the top, not just the military but political people and a lot of the the elite people, the way they use their own fellow citizens, they're prepared to use them as pawns. And this idea, you've got your citizens on the ground who are all patriotic. They believe it's all about nations. Then you've got people higher up. Who, who have none of those values. So it's naivety to get tied into that patriotic stuff when you're dealing with global people who have got their own agendas to make money, to further their, their own military ideas. And it's not, it's once again, I don't need to be an American to say Operation Northwoods is extremely anti-American, enough said.